So there's no PLs in any of these, just to know. None of these lenses are PL, none of the cameras were PL. Um, the PL cameras didn't exist yet. The, the Cine zooms, zooms, just to interrupt, okay. sorry, the Cine zooms are available both as PLs oh, okay. and as EF mounts. Right? And we actually had six cameras. Um, we used two, but they were prototypes and we were crossing our fingers, although they didn't fail actually. But yeah, we had six cameras on most of the shoots. Six, all prototypes. If you even notice, these are so prototyped that we had to kind of label all the buttons and everything with P-touches to figure out what everything did, so <laughs> pretty early on in development. Now, he had mentioned the 24 frame. We probably would have done Max's back as a 24 frame film, but it wasn't enabled in the camera yet in the prototype, and we did do a film out on the Max's back film as well, and, and could show it, not here, but we did show it at Paramount as a film out as well, so. Yeah? Two questions. First off, Will software upgrades in the future enable greater capabilities, especially in the frame rate arena? Um, in terms of what, over, under, that kind of thing? Yeah, well, to get above 30. Uh, you, all right, so you're 1 to 30 frames at 1080, and you're 1 to 60 frames at 720. Mm -hmm. Right, but ignoring 720. I doubt it. Okay. I've never seen that. I didn't expect 24 frame on a 5D, and we did that. But I haven't heard anything yet. Um, I think the best way for that to happen, if it's possible, is essentially we watch all the blogs and we get the engineers interested enough in doing that, but it's not positive you could do it technically. But, but is it, there a software upgrade plan for the camera? For say, yet. gamut, uh, color handling, just all sorts of technical We would, for one, wouldn't even know that okay. at this point in time. We can't speculate on a future product or any upgrade of a current product, okay. especially when it hasn't even shipped yet. Um, but like Tim said, th there's things that we go, oh, you can't do that with firmware, and then they turn around and do it, like 24p on a 5D. So. That makes it even harder to speculate. Second question. In the, in the Swords project, when he was in the interrogation scene especially, a couple of other scenes, there's a screen-like grid pattern. Yeah, that's my fault. Um, that was the very first setup of the very first day. To talk about the interrogation, yeah. and we got the camera settings wrong. Actually, some of that is direct 709 that we had to deal with. Um, but yeah, that's a little noisy, and you know, the whole film has its own sense of that was the whole description to be a bit noisy. <coughs> but yeah, there were some issues with that one particular scene. That so that's not set. that's not a that's not a high gain standard artifact. We were way up there. Okay. We were way up there. We were still sec 709. We weren't shooting a log, and that particular scene we couldn't redo. It was an expensive location, and we I'm were sorry out. to point out your. No, uh, you're not the first. <laughs> and, and, in, yeah, and in Yosemite, we're a few stops hot on the rock face, too. So it's okay, though, because it, it, it does point out the advantage of shooting a log and how that is how you're going to get the best dynamic range if you're at that particular sweet spot we talked about where you're in Canon Log and you're at ISO 850. So you're going to have the least amount of noise there. Whereas, like Tim said, that was in 709. Yeah. So most of the film, I know we saw the scene that was 20,000 in the courtyard. That yeah, that courtyard was a combination of 20 and 16. But then the rest of the stuff is most around 850 or less? Uh, it depends on the seven. film. In, in Sword, all over the place. So on Max's back, we never moved off 850. In uh, Mobius, we never moved off 850. Uh, in the other two films, they moved off, up over all the time. There's a lot of, ex lot of exit shot at 32 and 64, um, even a little bit higher. And then in Sword, he really pushed it 
uh, to say 16 and 20. I mean, that was that was the way they dealt with light, just bumped it up or took it down. So, yeah, all over the place. There were no filters on set at all for Max. It sort of wasn't even in the budget, actually. So we indeed a lot. There were, there were, um, there was the Sahara Gold filter on Mobius for a good bit of it, and a little bit of a um, uh, polarizing. For, for the so you, you shot daylight scenes at 850 using only the built-in NDs? Built in, the built-in NDs. The NDs on this camera are, are uh, the design is wonderful because they're, we're not layering NDs. So in order to get to four stops, we're not just sandwiching two twos. Because honestly, at 16,000 or 20,000, you'd see the kickback of the filters. It's an actual rotating filter where there's a glass filter coming in front of the sensor each one and then back to clear again. So they're really, it's a really high-end filtering system. We were actually able to save a pretty good chunk of money, especially on Max's back, because that was he was paying for that one, and we weren't giving him a ton. So he was watching every guy, and we sent the filters back. So we just didn't rent them. Is the, is the lens mount interchangeable, or do you buy one? I'm start or passing around the microphone. The PL or EOS. It's, um, it's an either or. Buy it as a PL, buy it as an EOS. You know, we started... Okay. But you can't you can't uh, switch it to a PL if you get the EOS. No, you can't. Okay. Um, we back we started development on this in May of '09, and it was about early 2010. That was the big debate in development whether or not we would make an interchangeable one or have to make two. And honestly, the engineers just could not the flange distance and things. It just didn't make sense. Now there are EOS to X to PL adapters already on the market, and I'm sure that you could put them on there. But I think you. I have to watch your back focus pretty hard. Uh, doing a log gamma as 8-bit, I thought was really interesting. Uh, I guess all the movies are graded and they look really good, particularly Mobius. But um, have you noticed in grading and post, have you noticed any problems with banding or posterization and gradients, like skies or anything like that? No. I kind of expected it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how you manage that, but um, I don't know if it's a problem. Yeah, well, the, the sensor is different than what you're thinking. There's, we ran into no rolling shutter problems. We ran into no aliasing problems. Um, it just didn't come up. I mean, I can make it roll shutter and I can probably find a way to create it to aliens, but in the real world, in all those shots, we didn't do it. Andrew Francis is the colorist on um, Mobius. He also colored Tree of Life, so he's a first great <laughs> colorist. But stretching out contrast from log to whatever your final look is going to be at 8 bit hasn't, you haven't noticed anything? No, I didn't. And the biggest, the biggest, to me, I think one of the things that I think sold the camera to me from the spec sheets that we saw to the final actual unit was that we interviewed a lot of directors, DPs, people that we were going to talk to to do these projects. And they all had to kind of present what they wanted to do, what they thought they were going to do. And like Richard Crudo, who did Max's Back, said, you know, I've got this film, and I want this feeling of like a French Connection kind of feeling. And then uh, Felix Aquila said, you know, we're going to do handheld, and it's going to be noisy a little bit, and we're going to kind of get a real. But they all got exactly what they wanted out of the same camera. They all, saw, when we finally saw these films, of it, this is exactly what they told me we were going to get three months ago. And they got it out of the camera. So. To me, I think it lived up to it. But we did. I did get a call from the, the colorist on Mobius because he was just kind of handed the files. He didn't know what it was, and he really wanted to know what the camera was. And he just finished Tree of Life at that point, or just it had just come out. So it was pretty interesting. Now, 8-bit did not create a problem. Great, thank you. Yeah, 8-bit was something I was really curious about. But like I said, this this is not your father's 8-bit. Everything we did on the front end totally changes the results that are on the back end. And like you say, the math doesn't lie. Well, in terms of this, it's all you know, the, the sensor, and then the processor, and then the codec. So it's more the math of the equation rather than the sum at the end that gives you the true answer. The sum at the end is a little misleading. Um, what kind of, how, does the camera know, what, what kind of lens information does the camera know? Does it know iris, does it know? Yeah, when, they're, when you're using the EF mounts, the EOS lenses, you'll, your metadata will have your f-stops and your shutter speeds and, and all that kind of stuff. If you use a PL or a dumb lens, then it's not going to know as much. But on the PLs, it won't know as much. But yes, it does know on the. You'll see the f-stop reading right inside the viewfinder as you change it. And what kind of control does the camera have over the, the lenses? First of all, the camera has no automatic. There's no auto iris. There's no auto focus. But the camera itself is where you can control the iris. Focus is purely manual. And then the camera in the cameras where you do your shutter speeds and your color balance and everything else. Will the PL version have the ability to communicate lens information via the eye technology? The like the Cook eye pancros have a lens no. technology. It'll be stuck. There's, there's no uh, connections built okay. into it. It's a it's a dumb mount. 
Yeah, like the uh, Canon uh, DSLRs, can you download custom profiles or picture styles to this camera? Yes, you can. Um, it comes preloaded with Log and with Rec. 709 and HDSLR, and then you can put like 20 on a card, I think, um, and download a custom, and do a custom picture that way as well. Are they a <clears throat> standard uh, PF2 file? Yeah, there's no, nobody's done a custom one for it yet like the Technicolor custom, um, but yeah, it's the same same structure as we had before, so. I don't think your HDSLR custom presets are gonna have any, custom looks are gonna have much to do with this. They yeah. won't load in, but. No, they would cross over. The the, um, the custom picture menu on this is the same as in our broadcast-oriented cameras, the uh, XF300 and 305. So they're those same kind of painting features. Uh, I know that you used a, a few uh, DSLRs in conjunction with the SC300 in there. How does uh, DSLR like 5D? We didn't though. There's no? no, there's no SLR footage in anything you saw. There's a fifth film that that called um, When You Find Me that was produced by Ron Howard and um, directed by his daughter Bryce, and we used 5Ds and T2Is and C300s. But on these, it was we used SLR lenses, but we never actually shot all the footage is through C300. Okay, I thought I noticed a, a DSLR here and there. We um, had them on the set for stills and stuff, but we didn't. How would DSLR uh, compare? To the C300, specifically because the codec is different. Than oh, when it comes to well, from a codec standpoint, this is a far superior codec right, to the right. SLR. You've got a 422 color space instead of 420, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the biggest aesthetic difference would be if you were trying to knock a 5D next to this one. The 5D sensor is about two times larger than this sensor, so it's a sliver depth of field. You kind of have a whole different look to the mm -hmm. to the image itself. Um, that said, on this other film, the, the, which we're showing at Sundance in two weeks. Um, we used a 5D for to mount in a helicopter to do some infrared stuff, and then we used a T2 T3I for um, animation, and then everything else was C300. And it all mixed relatively well. It depends on the shot, but it mixed pretty well. Um, I would love to stay away from quick time if possible, but mm. uh, flying the C300 on the choppers, and also what was the configuration he was using. Like what lens? It's in, in which film? In uh, Mobius. In Mobius, we flew. Yeah, we did fly the, the C three hundred on the on the RC and um, twenty four. I think mostly it was mostly the twenty four. Um, on Exit, we used the um, eight to fifteen on all the motorcycle stuff. So that's the eight to fifteen that's mounted to it. Um, we did use these the larger cine styles, the ones you, that we thought were PLs, a lot on Steadicam. And uh, the size and weight of the camera offsets sort of the size and weight of the lens, and it steady cammed really well. And four films, four different steady cam wrappers, four different versions of steady cam or incarnations of them, and it, it worked fine on all of them. In either EF or PL mount, uh, is there flange adjustment in the camera for depth issues? There's. And, and yeah. in addition to that, what is the construction between the sensor and the lens mount and between the bottom connection plate? And the camera chassis metal. Is it what's it made of? Yeah, metal or plastic. Metal. There's, there's very little plastic on this camera actually. The camera's magnesium and metal all the way around, with some of it with a plastic housing over the metal, but it's a solid metal camera. The housing is metal. Uh, I mean, the, the mount is metal. There is no built in back focus, uh, um, uh, flange adjustment. Uh, you've got flange adjustments on the lenses, on some of the lenses. Um, we did, we had six cameras and we did. Shim them. Uh, we shimmed one, and it, it was off like a, it was like four hundred of a millimeter, like this, the distance of a, of a piece of scotch tape. But we did shim the prototypes. Um, I've not done a PL. I would guess with PL you'd want to shim them, but with EOS you really don't have to. You're saying you can pull the PL mount and then shim between the PL mount and the body. You can still unscrew the mount, pull it off, put your shims, and put the screws back in again. So, so you can still. So it has a shim adjustable. Yes. Yeah, it's not a built-in adjustment. It's just your, you know, you throw your shims in there. What about the image stabilization? Can you use that with the EOS? Yes, if the lens has stabilization, then it's active. It's active. And even though I said the camera is not autofocus, it's not. But the um, Wi-Fi adapter that you saw mentioned in e the, with the iPad application, you can drive the motors on the EF lenses through that application. So you could power focus between the two. You won't autofocus, but you could do a. a, a <coughs> Drive the focus on any of the EF lenses that way. 
on the exit, they mentioned the uh, transcode to Cineform mm -hmm. for doing the green screen work. So I was curious, was that off of the XF media that was, was off, captured? It wasn't. It was off of the XF, and we did test. We recorded straight out of the HDSDI to Cineform, um, and then recorded to the media to see which was going to be the better, better way to go. Um, we didn't get much out of XF, uh, out of the HDSDI that we didn't get right to the card. So we elected to go to card and then move it over from there because I mean all the motorcycle stuff and all the remote just being tethered to anything was going to be a drag. But yeah, everything went to Compact Flash, everything went to, to XF Kodak and then off from there. This time, what's the weight of the camera, of the body just itself? 3.2 pounds. And on, was that the Red Rock Micro? Uh, it was. Red Rock uh, got on board fairly early and built us some prototypes, uh, cages. Well, I meant for the uh, the uh, follow focus. Oh, which wireless? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, they didn't have it yet. So. They were typical fizz rigs, depending on which film. Different, you know, probably the most expensive <coughs> thing on the set. Uh, it's shipping this month. Um, I think we all decided we actually are allowed to say price now. Yep. So sixteen sixteen thousand or less, somewhere around there. It's around the sixteen thousand dollar. Twenty thousand was a list. It should be selling for around sixteen. Um, and it ships this month in limited quantity, so depending on your time frame, the quicker you get on somebody's list, the better, I guess. Okay, and correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but this month the EF mount ships and the PL yeah, is coming later. True. PL is coming later. So if you're looking at PL, that's probably closer to March or April. Okay. 